Hello, I'm Kathy Keeville, and I'm an aromatherapist and an herbalist. But you know, I think I like to call myself just a green person. Being an aromatherapist has led me to really appreciate the fragrance of the leaves and flowers and roots of different plants that we use for therapy, and uh, the roses being one of them, of course. You know, I have a, a habit of whatever I'm standing in the middle of instantly becomes my favorite plant. So at the moment, it's roses. And uh, even though these are the wild roses that have only the single petals, the fragrance is really beautiful right now. So you'll have to use your imagination. But if you want to bring aromatherapy into your life, then you can go past imagination and you can make wonderful products out of them. My experience really started out in the garden the perfect place to be an herbalist and aromatherapist budding into a new world. And as I walked through the garden, I noticed that a lot of people would come to a certain plant and it would actually change their mood. So when they smelled roses, people would smile, I'm sure I'm doing that right now, and just throw their heads back a little bit and feel just so open. We all know that roses represent love and the scent actually inspires compassion in people. That's been known for thousands of years. You see it in literature and poetry. But it's not just the roses. In the garden, when they would get to the chamomile patch, then I would see people bend down and start talking very slowly and distinctly. When they got to the peppermint, they were just so exuberant and excited. It's actually because the scent changes the way the mind perceives the world and it can make people more excited, it can calm them down, or like the rose geranium, it can bring them into balance. A lot of fun being able to work with these plants. They're not as strong as drugs, but we love them for that. A drug will go in like a dictator and say exactly what the mind should do and exactly what the body should do, but not these plants. I always think of them as sitting down at a conference table and having a discussion with the body and deciding what would be the best avenue. Should we follow this? Should we follow that? Should we even do anything? What do you need? And isn't that really what you want for healing? It's to somebody approach you and say, you know, from the heart, what is it really that you need? But with the roses, when we talk about them being something that we would use at Valentine's Day, in the old days, herbalist and aromatherapist actually used roses on an everyday basis. And sometimes not even the essential oil. They would bring a bouquet to a person and that would inspire them to feel a little bit more relaxed. I actually use the scent of roses to just make people feel more receptive. Maybe they're a little bit resistant to a healing plan. They're a little bit resistant to the move that they have to make. A bouquet of roses, rose essential oil, a lotion, even a hand lotion that smells like roses will do the trick. The one thing is you want to make sure you use the natural product, either the plant itself or an essential oil based on the true plant. I love looking into the history of aromatherapy, fragrance, scent, perfumes. It's fascinating. In fact, apothecaries much like this would for hundreds of years stock aromatic plants. Peppermint, chamomile, concoctions based on aromatics were very, very popular for digestion to help prevent nausea in particular. They were actually used for headache. In fact, the old apothecary would be where people would go to get a peppermint cone or a camphor cone that would be something that would radiate the scent out into the room and ease the person's headache. It's interesting that science backs it up today because they found that if you take a diluted drop of peppermint and you put it on each temple, it actually can get rid of a headache and sometimes even ease a migraine. Give it a try if you ever have to. But even farther back into history, we find that uh, Cleopatra knew a few seductive tips for using aromatherapy that she used on Mark Antony. We find the Babylonians and all the ancient cultures really loving the way that scent would work for aphrodisiacs, but also to heal mind and body. In fact, healing the mind and changing the mood with aroma, that's been around a long, long time. Roses, 
one of my very favorite fragrances, and probably m many of yours as well. Roses are something that have been used through history by many, many different aromatherapists, including Paracelsus, who perhaps is not always identified as aromatherapist, but indeed this was a plant that he used. How about Nostradamus, like Paracelsus? He lived in the 16th century and is better known for being a soothsayer and seeing into the future. But I tell you, during the plague, not many people cared about that. They were more concerned about their immediate health and who can blame them. One of his favorite plants to use were roses. I have an old copy, it's actually a reprint of Nostradamus's recipes, and in there he has incredible formulas for rose elixirs that he gave people when they were suffering from the plague. His reputation as an herbalist was really outstanding. It was actually his day job. But he got kicked out of clinics by the regular doctors who called him an herbal quack. Too bad, because I think he was very successful as an herbalist. And also, he was able to make incredible creams and lotions out of roses that also heal different types of skin disorders. So Nostradamus is somebody to remember in our herbal history. Let's also look at herbalists that have written herbals that many of us do have a reprint of as well. Gerard would be a good example. A lot of his information actually came from a previous herbalist, Doden, but he added the illustrations and some of his own information. But the herbalists of the era of the 15th and 16th century often talked about the use of aromatherapy. They would say, there is lemon balm, which we often call Melissa in aromatherapy, but by either name, lemon balm, gladdeth the heart by smelleth alone. They talk like that then. And other things, that the aroma of chamomile and how it would soothe the emotions. In fact, when I first started studying aromatherapy, way back when, way back before there were actually any books in English on aromatherapy, I turned to these old herbals to get ideas of how I could actually incorporate it. And I figured, who would know better than herbalists from a few centuries ago who incorporated both herbalism and aromatherapy into their work and their practices? And Gerard was famous for his gardens. He knew personally what all of the different plants smelled like.